It's the Key Sessions with me, Roddy Hart, bringing the live music to you wherever you may be joining us now to do just that. Snow Patrol's acclaimed guitarist, Nathan Connolly, who has his debut solo album out in the world. It's called The Strange Order of Things. It was released just last month and Nathan's found a bit of time to drop into our music studios uh, downstairs here at Pacific Key to play some moments from it and to tell us all about it. It's just a joy to have you with us. Hello, Nathan. Hi, mate. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? Most good. of the point. Yeah, good. You're just saying there, um, <laughs> playing parts or to share songs with you. The first time I've done them acoustically, so uh, you're the guinea pig. <laughs> well, let's see. You're testing them out on us. It's only live radio. What could possibly, yeah, I know. What go, could possibly wrong? go wrong? I know. You've come to us from uh, Belfast today, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come over this afternoon. It's nice to be back in Glasgow. Yeah, um, it's a place you're very familiar with. It is, yeah. Um, although, you know, there's. Uh, I haven't been here in a little while, so there's lots of changes already, but, you know. And we haven't seen you for a little while, actually. The last time was a Snow Patrol <coughs> acoustic session on the Key Sessions, which was a, a real treat. Do, does it feel strange to be here on your Todd, basically, doing the solo thing? Yeah, I mean, a little, yeah. I mean, it's... <laughs> um, you're used to sort of arriving in force, do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Strength <laughs> in your, numbers. And, and especially when, um, you know, there's, there's a certain amount of being a guitar player, you can kind of... Um, you yeah, know, step back there, a you, you have, a, have a certain shield there. So yeah, that's true. Um, so, but yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's it's always great to be back in Glasgow. But um, yeah, you've got me singing tonight instead of Gary. Well, Nathan, so, um, al allow us to be your shield. We <laughs> shall protect you for this maiden voyage of solo music that you're yeah, about yeah. to give Buckle us. Buckle up! No. <laughs> <laughs> it's about to get wild. Um, no, it's just so brilliant to have you with us. And um, no, thank you. What a treat! So uh, let, we're going to chat all about this debut album, but I think we should get a song first. So tell us what you're going to play for us um yeah it's the first song off the record um as i said it's the first time i've played these this is a was is a duet with uh the, the incredible alvar reddy um who isn't here tonight yeah. um so um but yeah it's, it's the first song off the record so amazing so take it away nathan connolly playing live on the key sessions with the song ghost thanks mate <clears throat> Daydreams resurrect their hold on me Hard as I try to pull free I can't escape the atrophy Your ghost Kicking in my sleep I wake Your ghost Don't take this out Cast your shadow, then leave. Don't take this out on me. A dagger I can pull free. The flashbacks betray me. Threads keep unraveling. Buried in the room. I'm calling your ghost running in my dreams again your ghost don't take this out on me cast your shadow then leave don't take this out on me Dagger I can pull free Don't take this out on me I feel as much as you feel Don't take this out on me Take the blame while you heal 
Ah, beautiful. Nathan Connolly playing Ghost live on the key sessions. There we go. We can settle and relax, Nathan. <laughs> yeah. It's a lovely thing. Um, talk to me about that being the first song on the debut album. You mentioned um, there's another voice on it. It's it's a, a duet of sorts, I guess. Tell me about that collaboration, first of all. Um, it, well, it's, it's, it, it's the first song I actually wrote for this record. Oh. Um, so it kind of all was, seemed like it was going to be the first one. Um, felt like an opening riff. Um, I was struggling with it, to be honest, mm. and it, it had many shapes and forms. Um, long story short, until I, I kind of always heard a, heard a duet on there um, and someone else's voice, and I was listening to Alva's record at the time. Um, nice. There's a song called Between Your Teeth, um, on that record, which I loved, and uh, you know, it was her debut at the time. She's just released her second record, um, and I think going into working her third already, so she's not wasting any time. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, it, you know, you just hear a voice, and it was like, ah, that's that's what I was hearing. Yeah. And 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 she, to, for me, she she just added, she finished the track for me, I, and I was, uh, it nearly didn't make the record. I, I, I kind of. Yeah, I, it, until she added her magic to it, that yeah. that was that was what sort of it, sealed it for me. It's an interesting choice to make, I think, because the first song on your debut album is not just your voice, and I wonder how much of that was a conscious decision that you're aware of being having to be brave, I guess, and step out from Snow Patrol, and and um, you know, it's the first thing you're giving us as a solo artist, or was it just because you felt this is the song that kind of sets the tone for the rest of the album? Um. I, you know, I, I suppose there's an argument to say there. It certainly wasn't conscious, but there could have been mm. a subconscious um, yeah. <laughs> thing at play there. Maybe you know, um, it, for me, it was just I, I kind of, it, it, as I said, it always kind of sat mm. at, at the start for me and being the, the first song. You know, it, it was an idea that was two or three years before anything else, and a lot of it was written in the studio. But because um, I was, I was going to ask you about that, Nathan. The process of deciding that you wanted to make. A solo record after so many years, of course, with Snow Patrol, you've had yeah. other side projects too. But is it something you know long in the making, a long time coming? Yeah, I mean, it's something I've talked about, you know, for a long time. You know, oh, I'd love to do a solo record. I think I've been saying that for over ten years, <laughs> and it was starting to become one of those things. You're like, ah, he's just off, off on one, you know. Yeah. Um, but it's yeah, I you know, I think it, it, a lot of I had some time. I think I, I think I'd, I I. I decided that I was just going to go for it. Mm. Um, you know, I went then with a handful of songs, but I think I had stuff to write about. And, you know, without the, the cliche of, um, you know, exercising it or, or therapy, the, you know, uh, it felt just like the right time. And yeah. I think, you know, the, the right time for many reasons, you know, I think confidence, having the heart to do it, having the right thing to things to talk about, you yeah. know, uh, in many ways, you know, I'm, you know, I think everybody over the last few years has, has had time to reflect maybe and I, I don't a lot yeah. and I think that was a lot of that came from that none of it's about that time it's about many other things but you know uh, there was time to sit with your thoughts yeah you know? of course and, and, and I, I became a dad as well so um, there's nothing like um, focusing and <laughs> um, to you know, focus the mind yeah, yeah I mean the, the, you know to, for many things your mortality mistakes uh, what's important what's not what you can unshackle all those things um, so you're pouring so much of that into this record and it's your, your first record your first sort of statement of intent and I'm curious because there's a certain musical expression that comes with playing an instrument which you've done brilliantly with Snow Patrol since 2002, of course, round about then. Mm -hmm. But how does that compare with expressing yourself through songwriting, through writing songs? Um, you know, melody is, is, is something I've always... You know, it's the lyrics. It's the, lyrically is the scary side of it, I guess. You know, um, Why is that, do you think? I think, well, you're putting yourself out there and, you know, it's... I've, you know, as I said, I've done side projects before. That was still in a band, um, you know, even though I wrote the words. And I think that record was an angrier record and, and, and it was just a little more visceral and throwing stuff mm. out. Um, I think there was a little more considered this time. At least I hope it sounds that way. And, um, yeah, I, you know, it, it's your, it's you, I guess. You know, it's, um, you know, Gary's been doing that for a long time. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, I'm getting a taste of maybe what, what that is. But, you know, as I said, there's a certain amount of shield when you're not sharing words. You can share emotion and 
um, through melody and all, uh, you know, different instruments and all, yeah. of course. But um, you know, when you're putting your own words out there, then it's it's you. So I guess that's the um, the the more intimidating, scary side of it. Yeah, but I I think you do it tremendously well, and you're well, bring, you. bringing those two worlds together really well. And the process of recording it, you you recorded the whole thing in Belfast. Now in Snow Patrol, you'll have made albums in all sorts of different parts of the world, of mm -hmm. course. Why was it important to you, Nathan, to to go home really to make the album? Um, I did. You know, I didn't know the answer to that question. I've been asked it a couple of times until sort of talking through it in interviews and stuff. I think. I didn't know it at the time, but part of that shield, I guess, I'm talking about is making it somewhere where I felt safe. Um, and, you know, I walked into the studio most days. Um, I didn't have to think, of, you know, simple things. I didn't have to think about where I was walking. I was just trying to write, you know what I mean? It's, it's, oh, it's, it's handy. It's, it's autopilot. Well, yeah, it's autopilot, it's you know. Um, so I think there was, in hindsight, an element of being secure and, and not having to worry about any other sort of outside influences. Um, I've, I've never made an album in Belfast either, so, you know, um, I'd set it just to see, you know, how much I could do myself. Yeah. Um, turns out I'm not a drummer, um, <laughs> so that was something that, um, you know... Yeah, you, you, I mean, feeling comfortable is an interesting thing, isn't it? Because um, you started out with the intention of playing a lot of the instruments on the record. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that was the idea. But... Yeah. Um, and I wonder why that was the idea. Is it because of, you know, your experience playing in a band for so long and it's, you know, I want to focus on just what's in my head and I, I want to get it out in that sense? Yeah, I, I think there was a level of experimentation just to see what I was actually capable of. And um, and for the most part, I did. And, you know, um, ham-fistedly played, you know, some keys and, and, and I had time to explore. There was, you know, nobody was waiting on this record and, and I had time to make it and, you know, I have the luxury, you know, mm. to, uh, you know, I can take time and afford time to to sit with these songs and go back to them. So, um, but yeah, but you know, I, I think there was a lot of missing, you know, turning around and there's no one there to bounce off. Yeah. Um, very quickly, I was like, oh, well, that's weird, you know, um, and th therefore collaboration came up, you know, with like Dave and Herb who were in Little Matador, um, and I've known those guys, you know, from my first band, um, and and then other friends over the years that that, that are you know close or I trust and and getting them involved, yeah, um, and then people like Alva who you know who beautifully agreed to, yeah. to do it. There's people like Simon Neal from Biffy Clyro on there too, which we will talk about in the secondary sure. because we know we're heading towards that song. But we have you here, Nathan. You have that brilliant acoustic guitar of yours and uh, I think we should get another song. What are you going to play for us next? Um, uh, Heart of Stone. So um, I'm, I'm basically just playing the, the record in order. So um, <laughs> that's, that's, that's the time end of it is. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, Heart of Stone. <clears throat> I seem cold to leave you hollow I understand you must have felt alone Could I have acted any other way? Echoes waking in a heart of stone And on the nights I know you need it For me to say I mean it I fought with you and pleaded I struggled to be clear Times I didn't hear you, deafened by it all. And on the nights I know you feared it, I should have held you near. Endless rabbit holes of hurt and loss, a spiral further in the great unknown. It's proven hard to right the wrong digging deeper to a heart of stone and on the nights I know you need it for me to say I mean it I fought with you and pleaded I struggled to be clear at times I didn't hear you deafened by it all and on the nights I know you feared it, I should have held you near. I wake in the middle of the night. 
night cold sweat heart racing to feel cutting like a knife i resist temptation in the dark to give in to the guilt the one the need to make things right regret is all that's left of us and on the nights i know you need it for me to say i mean it i fought with you struggle to be clear at times i didn't hear you deafened by it all and on the nights i know you feel it i should have held you near on the nights i know you need it and on the nights i know you Nathan Connolly, Heart of Stone, just brilliant, Nathan, and this Thank maiden you, voyage, it's, it's a smooth, lovely thing. Uh, we're just delighted to have you with us. The album is The Strange Order of Things. It, it was last month it was released, wasn't it? It was, uh, at so, the end of the month, yeah. Yeah, amazing, and you're playing it live in session on the key sessions with me, and we're going to see you in hour two. You're going to hang around, you're not going to hop a plane back to Belfast, are you? No, no, I'm in Glasgow for the night. Glasgow for the <laughs> night, there we go. It's all happening. Uh, Nathan, we'll you, you go and have a little rest. I I get do. that guitar in, a, in another lovely tuning and we'll see you in hour two. Brilliant, thanks mate. Oh, brilliant. Uh, Nathan Connolly playing live on the key sessions with me, Roddy Hart, and we're going to re- get to Nathan in hour two for more chat and more songs. Let's get back to tonight's very special guest this evening, the one and only Nathan Connolly. Nathan how are you? You rested? Are you well? I'm rested. Um, yeah, I'm well. I'm all good. <laughs> Still here. Brilliant. Uh, we're delighted to have you with us. And I think I'm right in saying this next song you're going to play for us is the song that we've been playing quite a lot on the key sessions, one of the lead singles from the album. It is, yeah. Uh, and featuring the talented vocals of uh, one, you know, the one and only Simon Neal from Biffy Clyro. Tell us a little bit about his involvement. Uh, I mean, well, it's just magical what he did. Um, we'd obviously f- from back in the day, we've known each other, um, and over the years, it said, "Oh, we should really do something together at some point." And mm. you know, backstage or after shows, that kind of conversation. But um, yeah, I I wrote this with Simon and um, Dave McGee, who was in Little Matador, and is um, I wrote two songs with Dave on this record, um, and mm. I I just. I love the music. It, it, it was ready. I, I was going to say I was struggling to connect with it. I wasn't. I loved the music. I just, mm. um, I hated everything I was doing on it. And uh, you know, it, sometimes it's just. I guess we were saying earlier about you know, um, collaboration and and. Um, you know, I was just stuck and 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 I said, feeling uninspired with what I was doing. So yeah. um, I was like, look, I sent Simon a few things to see if he wanted to play guitar or, but he connected with this, and I was, um, I'd said to him like, I have nothing for this, so go for your life, and he did, and um, you know, it, it just came at it from somewhere that I couldn't or wasn't or couldn't see it, you know, um, and. Yeah, just uh, yeah. You know, the, the the exciting thing about collaboration is you'd no idea what you're about to get, yeah. and that's you know that's part of the joy and the thrill. That's and so magical. So presumably, did he did he add lyrics to it? Was it a collaboration in that sense, and the vocal and or? Yeah, yeah. Simon wrote the words. Amazing. So it's, um, a, it's a proper co-write between the two of you. It's absolutely yeah, and it's um, as I say, he just, uh, I mean, he he delivered much much more than I mean, I, I knew he would, but he, he he even more so. I was just thrilled with with what he sent and. Um, uh, Brilliant. Yeah, just I mean, it, it, you know, he's he's got his. Uh, everybody knows, you know, Biffy have their, their own. The, they're the one and only, and um, he's his own metering, their own sense of melody, and yeah, just a. I mean, it's just yeah. a joy to have him on it. Yeah, amazing. Well, let's hear it right now, and we'll, we'll chat a bit more after it. So it's Nathan Connolly live in session with us on the key sessions, performing fires. Fly 
flashlight stay Bounced down the stairs as I hold my breath and raise my arms for everyone To follow me out into the clear black sky We'll tumble as the flames play You can wait for it You can wait for it You can wait for it You're not dreaming, it's a screeching alarm Sleeping through a screaming alarm How can I be drowning in the fire? How can I be drowning in the fire? For the sun shine, shine. I'm ready for your peace sign, my love. I'm ready for the bass line, line. I'm ready to be kissed like a room with a spark. You can wait for it. You can. Dreaming, it's a screeching alarm. I won't wait for it. I won't wait for it. I won't wait for it. I'm not sleeping through a screaming alarm. How can I be drowning in the fire? Uh, Nathan Connolly with Fires performed live on the key sessions with me, Roddy Hart, and uh, Nathan's tuning up. Yeah, there. sorry, there, there. No, you're just doing that rock and roll thing and just reflecting on that kind of Biffy Clyro Snow Patrol intersection. You have you guys shared bills before in the past, presumably festivals and things like that, right? Yeah, we have. Um, uh, I think the f- I think the first time I properly, I mean, I was aware of Biffy, obviously. Um, having lived in Glasgow and yeah um but I think the first time we uh, the first show I remember was Zian Lou's uh, Gonzo uh, yeah. was uh, um a long time ago a lot, but that was 2002 <laughs> or 3 so it was um we were all much much younger yeah <laughs> where um, we all yeah um and then yeah of course over the years and I'm I'm, I'm of course I'm a fan and uh, I've seen Buffy many times and um and the thing about yeah. Simon is he always turns up dressed for the occasion, I've found. He's he- one of those men that can just... Um, Simon, if you do this, you, you know, <laughs> you're... Um, I am in awe of how you, you just rock a look. And uh, I, I got to do a, a, a version with him in, in January there. And... Uh, uh, you know, I was saying earlier, I was just dressed in the blacks, and uh, <laughs> Simon completely outclassed me. Um, and uh, yeah, but you know, there. You, you were telling me earlier that he he rocked up in the big long red coat and the small moustache. The beard was gone, and you quickly deduced he'd been watching a bit too much of Get Back. The Beatles. <laughs> yeah, to be fair, haven't we all? <laughs> no, but um, but uh, I didn't quite go for amazing. the look. But, <laughs> um, but maybe I should. Uh, I think you should. I think you could rock it. Too. It's all about the confidence. You just got to go for it. That's it, though. You got to own it. Um, Nathan, tell me about the influences part of the record because um, when you're in a band, of course, there's a, there's a bit of give and take. Influences kind of converge, and and you're looking for that sweet spot, the things you all kind of almost agree on. Yeah. Um, was this a chance for you to go to other places with your music that you you might not necessarily have gone to before? Um. Uh, yes, um, I mean, but n- not super consciously though. Mm. I I, I kind of really tried with this record just to let everything 
um, to let it be, speaking of the Beatles. Um, yeah. But I, yeah, I, I tried not to, you know, with, for example, Little Matador, I, I, you know, I was like, okay, I want to go and make this kind of rock record or, you know, I mean, that's a, an umbrella term for sure. But mm. um, with this, I kind of just wanted to let those influences or, you know, um, loves and genres just come out as they were and and they did we we really didn't try to take anything mm. from being you know too you know shoegazy or or you know if it was leaning towards more electronic just just to let that happen and yeah. try to let this you know not to get too mystic about it but let the song kind of take us there let it you know songs king and just absolutely lean into that so um you know i think there's influences in there for sure i mean the, the weird thing about that is you know i i'll, I'll reference something and people go oh really and then they'll say something <laughs> they're like i didn't hear you know it's it, it, <laughs> it's always the way it's that some everybody hears something different which is through. great yeah exactly um and then in terms of you know having this set of songs recording it or maybe even in in demo form you know, you have such a big musical community to lean upon and to be part of. Of course, your nearest and dearest in Snow Patrol. Yeah. You know, do you all support each other when you go off and do these side projects? Do you listen to demos? Do you give feedback? Or when, you know, you have your own time, is there a kind of separation and, and that's that's the understood thing? Um, I mean, we're all obviously 100% supportive. I yeah. think um, always have been. And um, as far as... Um, here, yeah, I mean, yeah, we play. I, you know, I maybe don't send everything, or we don't all send each other everything. You know, maybe if we happen to be hanging out with each other, you know, mm. we've all, yeah, we share it and we play it, um, and eventually probably send it. You know, of course, I sent the guys the record. Um, That's always uh, a nervous thing, though, isn't it? Because friends who play music making their own records and sharing that final product. Yeah, well, they kind saying, of have to say at least, it, uh, yeah, it's great. <laughs> yeah, you're kind of um, waiting for a few days, hoping they'll get into. Have you? Listen to it yet? You know? I mean, I th yeah, exactly. I think. I mean, I think. Um, I you know, I remember playing stuff to to JQ and and, and everybody. Um, but I, I guess um, you know the the records out on on Gary's um, third bar label. So yeah. Gary probably got a little more of it um, um, along the way, um, which maybe wasn't great at certain points. <laughs> but um, but yeah, but yeah, yeah. Everyone was you know really supportive that's about it. Absolutely, so. oh, that's good to hear. Uh, and a time of reflection, of course, Nathan, because we're heading towards the Snow Patrol final straw anniversary edition uh, release in August. Time flies, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's it doesn't it really doesn't feel like twenty years um, since that record came out. And so that was presumably just is that a year after you joined the band? Yeah, I, I so we we recorded Final Straw in February March two thousand and three. So you know literally 20 years ago and um i'd moved over the previous spring 2002 mm. and yeah i think my first show was august or something like that um but yeah so i mean they were writing that record as i joined the band yeah. so um so i mean yeah it, it, for it, that record changed our lives you know and i know eyes open then followed and and went on to even bigger things but i you know i i, I think without you know final straw Obviously, there wouldn't have been yeah. another record, but and but it's just collectively, individually, you know, it, we've so much to thank. You know, it just yeah, I can't, you, know, you it, were in it, the eye of the storm. We were, it. and we had no idea, and you know, that we were on tour for two years, and um, it was a great two years, and you know, the, I was still living in Glasgow at the time, so there's a whole um, you know four year period there that that. Um, I associate with being here as well, but yeah. it was just um, an amazing time, and and as I say, you know, absolutely changed our lives. Yeah, and I was going to say that first show you played with them, um, presumably before the the album was released, must have been in a, a, a slightly smaller <laughs> venue than you became used to <laughs> playing. Yeah, they, yeah, they Do were. You remember I where mean, it was? Um, well, we played a few. We I remember the because uh, Final Soul was re released actually the following year after after oh, Run came out. It was re released. Yeah. Because um, run, you know, again, that was that was the turning point for for, for that record. Um, but yeah, we were playing very small places to you know, fifteen, twenty, thirty people, um, and um, the yeah. rest is history. Yeah, it's uh, it was it was great fun though, and you know, the, the, like playing those songs, because after final store there was a lot of pressure, I guess, you know, uh, uh, but 
before it, it was re-released, we were still, you know, in those venues trying to mm. spread the word, I suppose, you know. The gospel itself. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, you know, and here we are 20 years later and we have you with your first solo album. That's reason to celebrate, Nathan. Yeah, yeah. Um, it only took that amount of time. But yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I think you were kind of busy in the interim. Um, but tell us what's coming up. I mean, you know, this is the first album. It's only a month old, of course, but 10 years in the making. Are you, are you hungry to do more? Do you think you're going to have the capacity to do more? You're obviously busy with the day job and all that stuff. Yeah, I mean, I'd like to do more. I don't know if this is, um, you know, I guess it's opening the door for the possibility you know mm. um, you know, I, I'd always said I'd do another little Matador record but that's people in other bands as well so that's mm. more difficult so yeah I mean I'd like to um, obviously um, there'll hopefully be a Snowboard Soul record next year and you know we, we've done a bit of work on that so um, yeah if time mm. allows it but you know uh, you know when Snow Patrol is, is is always there it's always yeah, in, it's always course. in our minds but you know when, when, when that comes calling or we feel the time is right then you know, that's what we do. Yeah, of course. Um, so, you managed to fit that in in the, in the you know the time between projects with Snow Patrol, of course, and you've managed to fit in being with us tonight, which um, we're just so grateful to you for. So, let's get one final track for me. Sure. Are you tuned up and ready to go? Um, are you, are you sounds like it. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I mean, it's just the pro, the pro that you are, Nathan. <laughs> there's, uh, a, there's a whole team of people <laughs> hiding behind me here just to prop me up. <laughs> Um, tell us what what final track you're going to play for us. Um, uh, this is Night Songs. Uh, it, it's actually the, the the there's two songs it's technically uh, about. Th this one was written for my son. Beautiful. Time in time, we'll find our way. If you fall, you fall, your tears will dry. Shadow, shadow. May drag you down. Burn bright, burn bright. You will burn high. We are not alone in a night sun.
like songs We are not alone In night songs Tender, upfront, ever so intimate from Nathan Connolly Night songs just gorgeous. Live in session on the key sessions with me, Roddy Hart. A reminder that the debut solo album, The Strange Order of Things, is out now. Like now. Nathan, just brilliant to have you with us. Yeah, thank you, mate. Thanks for having me. It's just been brilliant. Um, have you got gigs coming up? What's, what's I'm planned? doing a show in Belfast um, on June 18th and hopefully looking at some more uh, later in the year. But um, re looking at some shows. So, um, yeah. Well, congratulations on the album. Enjoy being in Glasgow for one extra night tonight uh, before you head back to Belfast tomorrow <laughs> and uh, we'll see you somewhere down the road I hope so thanks mate. Thank thanks you. so much Nathan Connolly thanks, um, performing live on the key sessions if you missed any of the uh, first hour then you can catch up with it on BBC Sounds of course huge thanks to Nathan uh, for being with us all the way from Belfast uh, tonight well he's in Glasgow but he came all the way from Belfast you catch my drift it's the key sessions here on BBC